is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Play close attention as we prepare now to go into the word. So Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. When you have Matthew chapter 16, signify by saying amen. Matthew chapter 16. When you have it, say amen. Okay. All right. The topic of the message today would be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Somebody say a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Let's say that one more time. A true disciple of Jesus Christ. And we're also going to be talking about the price of of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. You want to write that down as a subtopic? I don't have it written, but we're going to be talking about the price. Amen? The price of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. We thank you that we're here gathered together in your name, God. We, 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 it's an honor. It's a privilege for us to be here. We thank you for just waking us up, Father, giving us another opportunity to do more for you, God. I, yes, we want to go to heaven. Yes, we want to be spending eternity with you. But we also want to be pleasing to you when we arrive there. We want you to be able to say, well done, that good and faithful servant. When I was young in the Lord, all I wanted to do was just get to heaven. But, Lord, I want to get to heaven, oh, God, with, with joy, to see joy in your eyes, Father, that I did what you have commanded me to do while I was on the earth, that I did not waste any time. So, Father, we just say thank you today for waking us up. I just wanted to put emphasis on why I'm saying thank you for waking me up this morning. Because I have another chance. If I, whatever I failed at yesterday, you woke me up to allow me to get that thing right today. And we thank you for your grace. It's renewed every morning, Father. Thank you for new grace. We thank you for new mercy, Father. We put now to enter into your word, Father. Speak to us, Holy Ghost. Speak to us. Take us into this book. Take us into these chapters. Take us into these verses. And let these verses get into us, Father. Let it become a part of our lives on the day. We believe that your word is a living word. Live through us, Father. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, God. Anoint us afresh right now, afresh. Anoint to be upon us as we speak forth the word of the living God. Let it be like it were when you spoke to those disciples after you had risen. They said, did not our heart burn within us when he spoke? God, let our hearts burn within us, O God. On today, Father, those that will watch, God, those that will hear this message, Father, let them get nothing less than we ask you on today. Let it change lives. Let hearts be convicted, God. Let us be convicted to the point of change, Father. Let godly sorrow work repentance, Father. This is what we ask of you now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We don't get into the word. I want to just take this time to thank God for all of you that were here. I see the Friday night people are here, so I thank God for you all. Amen. Uh, we had a good time, right? I think it's going to even be better uh, this coming Friday because we're going to be talking about some things. I'll let you know after service what we will actually be uh, talking about on this coming Friday. If the Lord Terry wills and says the same. How many of y'all say that? If the Lord Terry wills and says the same. I say that because it's, it's only if he wills for me to wake up tomorrow that we'll be able to do this or be able to do that. So we just give him all the glory, the praise, and the honor on today so we in matthew's chapter number matthew chapter 16 i hear my son in my ear saying why you be saying matthews i don't know maybe the older saints i used to come because i came up in church to the age of 16 years old and some of those things just fall off on you well matthew matthew chapter 16 gonna begin reading here at verse 21 again we're talking about a true disciple of Jesus Christ, and look, if the Lord allows, we're going to get into the price of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. So here we go, and we're going to get into the scripture. Now, verse 21, he says, from the time, from that time forth, begin Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem 
and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Y'all believe that, right? Y'all know y'all salvation stems off of that, right? Amen. 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 We're just trying to see if we got some people that believe that. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me. Look what he saw, Peter. He said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Somebody say, you got to watch what come out of your mouth. Watch what come out of your mouth. You don't want Jesus himself to rebuke you. Watch what come out of your mouth. Glory to God. Make sure you're walking in the right realm. Amen. Make sure you're walking in the right realm. Peter wasn't in the right realm at that time. He was seeing things as men see. Huh? How many know it's a very, very, very deeper revelation? <laughs> Amen. Some serious things that had to take place. Jesus had to come. He had to die. Or we wouldn't be sitting where we're sitting right now. Might as well get heaven out of your view. If Jesus didn't die, take heaven out of your view. Amen. We're all like men most miserable. Huh? Without the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So we go here, verse uh, 24. He said, then said Jesus unto his disciples. This is where you want to start to pay close attention. Now, this is what we get into explaining uh, the topic that the Lord gave me. He said, then said Jesus unto his disciples. Everybody should know that a disciple, one of the, uh, the best definitions or the simplest definition is the follower, a follower of Jesus Christ. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. We won't touch that today. Amen. But it's a follower of Jesus Christ. I like to say a true follower of Jesus Christ. The definition for a disciple. But we'll give the rest of that probably next week. It says, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, I'm going to stop right there and let you know how I got to this point. I was at work uh, one day, and uh, this dropped in my spirit, and I began to type into my phone uh, because it's like uh, burdens, burdens that be on my heart, burdens that be on my heart, grievings that be in my spirit, um, and I believe that comes from the Lord, about the state of people. Y'all following me? Because I want people to be better. I want people to get it. I want people to understand Y'all feel where I'm coming from right now. And this began to uh, drop in my spirit. And I know when the Lord is speaking something specific to me, because I had instantly, I began to just get my phone. I got to type it down. One of the problems of today is people want God. And think about what I'm going to say now. One of the, the problems of today is people want God to come into their life. We even say the sinner's prayer like that, Lord, come into my life. But you, I'm going to tell you something. God let me know that's, it's, that's not the way that he desired for it to be. And that's not the way. It can't work that way. That's our problem. Think about what I just said. We want God to come into our life. He, you want God to be a part of what you doing. You want God to be a part of uh, how, you know, your way, your will, how you see it, what you want to do, how you think it's supposed to be. So I was like, man, I got to even change why I lead people into salvation because that's not the proper way to do that. You know, God, well, this, let me finish. He said one of the problems of today is people want God to come into their life when God wants them to give up their life. Amen. 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 We're talking about a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Want me to read that again? Yeah. When God wants them, let me start over. I think y'all want me to start up to the top because this is very important because this is, this is a twofold message. This is for the unbeliever and the believer. This is twofold. This is let the unbeliever know how you truly come to Christ and what it truly means to become a disciple of Jesus Christ or a believer in Jesus Christ. And this is letting the believer know what God expects of us and from us. 
So he said one of the, the problems of the day is people want God to come into their life. When God wants them to give up their life. But why? So he can give them what? Life. Huh? Or a new life. So when you come to Christ, you're giving up your life in exchange. Somebody say, in exchange. See, people, when they get saved, they, 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 some people live their whole saved life trying to get it right. When all, it's just a simple, somebody say, a simple exchange. Mm-hmm. You give him your life, he gives you eternal life. You give him your life, he gives you new life. And we're going to get in that in script. We're going to have that in scripture. Amen. We're going to give it in scripture. But when God wants them to give up their life, so he can give them life or a new life. Even in the church, we are constantly trying to live our life. Hmm? Opposed to the life that God has set for us. Y'all want me to say it again? You're, those of you that are writing, thank you. Those of you that come with your notepads. Amen. But it say even in the church. So we got to pay close attention. We're in the body. We're in the body. Those of us that are believers, those of us that are saved, even in the church, we are constantly trying to live our life. Opposed to the life that God has set for us. So let's get back to the scripture now. You can understand what Jesus is saying. Verse 24, Matthew 16, Matthew 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me. Uh oh, look what he say. Let him what? Deny himself. Huh? And do what? And take up his cross and follow me. I told you sometime when I'm studying, I got this study Bible here. I preach out of some multiple Bibles, but this is the Bible I, I chose. I've been choosing for, you know, a couple of months now. And the footnote says here, to take up, take up his cross, he's, he's describing what, the, what, the, what, the man, what, what Jesus is saying here in 1624. He said, take up his cross refers to the death march. Of the Christian disciple who is uh, figuratively sentenced to crucifixion over his decision to follow Christ. The Christian must be prepared to give his life for Jesus. And that means spiritually and that's a spiritual and naturally. You, you got to be willing to give your life. For Jesus. How many are ready to give your life for Jesus right now? Just think about it. Don't answer that. How many of us are willing and ready at any time to give your life for Jesus Christ? Because today's topic, a true, we're talking about a true disciple of Jesus Christ. We're fine. You'll see these disciples he's addressing right now. Uh, he's addressing the 12 disciples right now just before Jesus ascended. Amen. This is where he died and rose again. This is he actually he's preparing them for what's about to take place in his life. But you see them graduate from how they're thinking, what they're saying. We see Peter just had to be rebuked. But as they progressed on and they moved into what we call now the church age, you see different men. Not only did they give their life, but up until the point where they physically had to give their life, they were willing to give their life. And we're talking about in the natural. Amen. Physical death. Somebody say, Pastor, teach you how the Bible teaches it. <laughs> we're talking about what? A true disciple of Jesus Christ. And then why wouldn't you be willing to die if we believe what we say that we believe? Huh? But he says, if any man will follow after me, let him deny 
himself. You got to deny yourself. If we're going to break it down, it's going to make more sense. We're going to compare scripture with scripture. So we're going to have scripture unfold or uncover this, these verses that we have now. We're going to go into some more books and it's going to uncover in depth what we're saying right now. Because normally I would try to break down a lot of these words, but we're not going to do that right now. Thank God for Friday we, when we did what I said it was going to do. Didn't, when we were able to even complete the assignment that we were on. I, I gave the definitions of all the, uh, those words that we in, what is Colossians chapter 3. Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Tensive Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is, here we go, 904-713-3609. Again, it's Erico 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.